our top stories this week. In Wisconsin, more than 50% of CPS agents quit their jobs in 2014. In Colorado, a state review claims that no other CPS agents have lied after one lied about visiting a baby who later died. In New York City, the child protective industry is suing to keep a CPS agent from getting his job back after he lied about visiting a kid and lied about all of the overtime he was claiming. And in Manatee County, Florida, there have been 14 adoptive kids returned to the child protective industry from their forever homes in the last 22 months. In Australia, they're still stealing Aboriginal kids and placing them into foster care where they're being abused. In Canada, mostly Aboriginal foster kids are still being left in hotel rooms long after they were supposed to fix that problem. In Nevada, a new report by a Blue Ribbon panel is recommending major changes to the Clark County child welfare system, including pumping more money into the system. In South Carolina, a new report by a Senate panel is recommending that the state pump more money into the child protective industry to reduce caseloads of CPS agents who can't handle it. While the same state tries to get out of a class action lawsuit by a New York-based child advocacy group against the child protective industry alleging the state is endangering the kids in its care. In Arkansas, the legislature tries to ban the practice of rehoming adopted kids in light of a case where a state representative gave his two adopted daughters to a man who molested one of them. With the governor ordering a broader review of the child protective industry whose refusal to take back the kids helped lead to the drastic decision. A study by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services finds that too many poor kids on Medicaid or who are in foster care are receiving unnecessary psychiatric medications with the quality of care standards not being met by the doctors. And in Manitoba, Canada, girls are six times more likely to be reported missing than in the rest of the country, with most of them having been in the care of the child protective industry. In British Columbia, Canada, a mother is suing the child protective industry after her baby died in care with bruises and broken bones, but they can't figure out why she died. In Florida, a foster mother is being charged with the murder of a two-year-old in her care. In Illinois, a father is including a shrink in his lawsuit against CPS for not reporting suspicious behavior after his four-year-old daughter was beaten to death in a foster home. And in Minnesota, the state revoked the license of a foster care agency after a six-year-old died in one of its homes last December. In Oklahoma, a real mother is pissed after CPS agents snatched her kid and put him in with a foster mother who murdered him. And in Texas, a new report claims 826 child deaths while under the watchful eye of CPS or in foster care between 2010 and 2013. In Florida, a CPS agent was acquitted of threatening to take a woman's kids away if she refused to have sex with him. In Ohio, a foster care provider and teacher was charged with sexually abusing a child in his care. In Nevada, a former foster parent gets four to six years for sexually abusing his adopted son. And in Manitoba, Canada, a judge was told about how a foster parent used spy cams to record co-workers and children while they used the bathroom. In Ontario, a Toronto daycare provider has to pay $13,000 to the parents of a child she falsely reported to the child protective industry. In Illinois, a couple of parents are alleging the child protective industry covered up the abuse of their kids who were in foster care. In Kansas, a former CPS agent filed a whistleblower lawsuit after being fired for bringing attention to the false reports of another CPS agent to her supervisor. And finally, tonight, a real mother is accusing Rosie O'Donnell of stealing her baby who the talk show host later went on to adopt. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.